Today we're gonna learn 12 things about this kit lens. We will start with physical aspects and at the ending of this video we will do 5 image quality tests. It's the Canon EFS 18 to 55 mm f3.5 to 5.6 3. Let's start with the first thing, build quality and what's on the lens. First thing that I have to say is that it looks good for a kit lens, but it doesn't feel like it has a solid build quality. The zoom ring has a sticky feeling to it, not great for video shooters, but it shouldn't cause too many issues for photographers. The focusing ring, it turns smoothly, it doesn't have that sticky feeling. But it doesn't seem like it was built to allow you too much precision in manual focusing. A thing that I do like about this lens, the glass. I like the way it looks. We can see that it's nicely darkened by the coating that Canon used. We will test that coating later in the bright light performance test. Let's now see the filter thread size, 58 millimeters. It's displayed there on the front side. On the back side, no surprise, the mount is made out of plastic. Looking at the size of this lens, at 28 millimeters, it's 6.85 centimeters long. And if we zoom in all the way, it gets only one centimeter longer. Without the rear and front lens cap, this lens has only 190 grams. Quite light, a lot of plastic, no metal. Regarding the focal length, going from 18 to 55 millimeters, the full frame equivalent of this lens is 29 to 88 millimeters. So it's going from a wide angle to a short telephoto lens. These flexible focal lengths make it a good lens for beginners who want to learn photography and explore the outdoors. I don't understand why so many people are disliking it. Maybe it's because it doesn't let in a lot of light. But these focal lengths are definitely handy. If you want, you can get a lot of good shots thanks to them. Even if oftentimes it's underrated, this lens is quite useful. So, on what cameras will it work? It has the S on it, meaning that it was made to work only on Canon's APS-C sensor DSLRs. With an adapter, we can use it on Canon's mirrorless cameras as well. But again, on those that have an APS-C sensor. Let's talk about the aperture now. When I was reading the specs, I was surprised to see that it has only 6 aperture blades. So I was curious to see how the bokeh looks like. We will see the bokeh later in tests. Let me show you the minimum aperture values. I made a visual representation. F3.5 stays open for just a bit, between 18 to 24 millimeters. And F5.6 starts at 50 millimeters. So quite a lot of changes in that zoom range. This lens doesn't let in a lot of light. Now let me show you the maximum aperture values. F22 at 18 millimeters and it closes all the way to F36 at 55 millimeters. When it comes to focusing, it's not too good. Let me show you. While recording video, the lens focuses quite slowly and the focusing motor makes some loud noises as you can hear. If we stop the video recording, the lens focuses a bit faster, but those noises again are loud. When it comes to manual focusing, the noises are still there. So I wouldn't recommend it for video shooters, but at least it's sharp when it locks onto the target and the minimum focusing distance is at just 25 centimeters. This lens doesn't have image stabilization. There are two versions that have it, but this one doesn't. The lack of image stabilization shouldn't cause too many issues though, at least when we are photographing at the wide angle of 18 millimeters. Okay, let's do some testing. We will start the image quality tests with this image with targets that I created in Photoshop. Took me 30 hours to make this image. Let's see the sharpness. At 18 millimeters, f3.5, we have very good sharpness in the middle of the image, average contrast and a bit of purple color fringing. Stopping down at f5.6 and everything is looking excellent in the middle of the image. Let's now switch again to f3.5 and see the corner. Sharpness is looking decent, but magenta and green color fringing is very noticeable on the contrasting edges. 
An improvement comes now at f4, and it's a lot better at f5.6. At f8, we still see chromatic aberrations, but at least we have very good sharpness. Let's zoom in halfway at 35 mm. Here, the minimum aperture is f4.5. The middle of the image is looking good. Chromatic aberrations are less noticeable. The corner lost a bit of sharpness, but at least we have less chromatic aberrations. Looking much sharper, if we stop down at f5.6 and at f8, we have a good result. Zooming in all the way at 55 mm where we have f5.6. The middle of the image got softer. Same thing happened in the corners. If we stop down to f8, we still see some chromatic aberration, but we have good sharpness. Overall, good results in the middle of the image when it comes to sharpness. The lens struggles a bit with chromatic aberrations, but if we stop down to f8, they are okay. And also at f8, the sharpness is good from corner to corner. Let's now move to the next test, distortion and vignetting. At 18 mm, we see a strong barrel distortion, which is not something that we want. Those corners are also pretty dark at f3.5, but they look much better if we stop down at f5.6. Some good news now. At 35 mm, there is no distortion and vignetting got better. For an improvement, stop down to f5.6. At 55 mm, again, the lines are nice and straight. Vignetting is looking decent and gets better now at f8. Moving to bright light performance. In bright light, the lens does quite a good job. Contrast levels are kept under control. We see some flaring, but it's definitely not a bad result. Close up image quality. I will set the lens at 55 mm and photograph this clock that I will set at 25 cm away, the minimum focusing distance. Let's begin. At f5.6, we don't see a good result. Let's look at the number 6 on the clock and we have low contrast. An improvement comes at f6.3, but we get an excellent result now if we stop at f8. Finally, bokeh. Interestingly, if we get close, that 6 bladed aperture delivers good bokeh, even at wider angles. If we zoom in, the objects that are far away are nicely blurred. So, quite a good result on bokeh. In conclusion, yes, it has a cheap feeling to it. The focusing motor is slow and it's quite loud, but it also has a lot of qualities. Good sharpness in the middle of the image, and if we stop down to f8, we have good sharpness from corner to corner. It also handles flaring very well. It's not a great lens, but it's definitely decent. Good for beginners. If this video was useful, please press that like button and see you on the next one.